Welcome to the live webinar on the topic of Sharpen Up Organizational Performance Management System by Dr. Rama Akula. This webinar is arranged by GPMA, Global Performance Management Academy. And before I proceed and give rights to Dr. Rama Akula, let me give a quick introduction about the speaker, today's speaker. Dr. Rama is a passionate is passionate about business and operational excellence. He's committed to helping clients achieve their elusive goals of operations, discipline, and operational excellence. Dr. Rama is a mechanical engineer with 21 years of experience working for oil and gas organizations in North America, Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. Dr. Rama gained significant recognition as a subject matter expert in plant management, QHSE, organizational strategic performance, operational excellence, HSC, and business excellence, quality management systems. Dr. Rama completed his doctorate and degree PhD in safety. He's a chartered member in IOSH, UK CMIOSH, holding the title Occupational Safety and Health Practitioners and a chartered mechanical engineer. He also holds an MBA in operations, a postgraduate diploma in HSC, and a certificate in disaster management. We are very lucky and honored to have Dr. Rama Akula today with us. This webinar will be for about 60 minutes, more or less like a lecture format where he'll be giving a presentation and then we'll open the floor for question and answers in the end. But in the meantime, please feel free to insert your questions in the q and box. I'll be happy to read them over on your behalf during the Q&A session. You can also raise your hand during Q&A if you want to speak and talk to Dr. Rama. Now, without further delays, I'll just hand over to Dr. Rama so he may proceed with his presentation. Dr. Rama, may I request you to please turn on your webcam just for introductory hello and hi, and then we'll proceed with the presentation. Uh, good morning to you. Good afternoon, good evening. And my name is uh, Dr. Rama. Thank you very much, Ali, for a wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, today, the session is about one hour session, and we will see a uh, lot of information on organizational performance management system. So let me switch off my camera for the bandwidth issues and uh, we will start the presentation. Thank you very much, Doc. I think uh, everybody is uh, able to see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, before going to the presentation, let me give you a very brief uh, uh, one second. Let let me give you a very brief uh, benefits to the participants of this presentation. There are multiple topics are covered in this seminar or this webinar, and these topics are useful in multiple ways. I try to give at a very high level the benefits to the participants here. Uh, the topics helps in establishing performance management system for any organization, and uh, also the topics helps in develop and implement independent business unit strategies and manage independent site performance. And also it helps in setting direction and aligning specific departments into site specific goals and objectives. It also assists in um, uh, aligning various teams in a department towards broad objectives of organization or a, a department, I mean, uh, organization or a site and also it helps in assessing individual performance accurately. So these are all very high level benefits to the participants. This is a customizable uh, performance management system program. It can be used for an organization's business units, independent sites, or a specific department teams or individuals at, it, at any levels you can customize the system. So if you see the contents of this presentation, I have segregated the content into five major uh, sections. It starts with an introduction. Let us talk about the current scenario, the COVID lockdown, and uh, we'll talk about some of the business disruptions, the examples of business disruptions, how the business disruptions impact the business operations. And then we'll see some fundamental concepts of uh, business recovery, business continuity plannings. And then we will go to the actual topic of performance management planning. The performance management planning starts with the business impact assessment, and I will explain how to refine the strategy 
then we will give a very brief introduction about balance scorecard and then i will tell how to uh, develop organizational scorecards using the balance scorecard method and also i will give a very brief overview on networks networks is uh, it, it is a synonymous to committees then we will see the implementation part in the implementation before starting a strategic performance management or an organizational performance management what are all the inputs required and how to cascade the performance management system to various departments to individuals and how to align the individuals or a departments or an, uh, location goals to the strategic objectives of the organization i will explain then there are underlying conditions i will explain and few methodologies also uh, few methodologies also we will discuss uh, for implementation of performance management system later we'll go to the review and uh, i will in detail i will explain the networks activation and the networks operations and how to conduct performance reviews and how to handle the tracking uh, action tracking mechanism and what is the output from the entire system implementation and also i will give a very brief introduction about benchmarking finally we will see uh, the pre uh, the presentation with the refinements and continuous improvements as a topic at the end we will have a question and answer session yes the, uh, the entire presentation is a bit uh, 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 spread over 60 minutes it is uh, different concepts we are going to discuss that probably your questions may be answered in subsequent slides or you can keep at the end we can see all the questions at the end and i'll try to explain i'll try to answer all your questions so to start with the presentation let us go with an introduction let us see what is the current scenario current covid lockdown scenario and how it impacted our businesses and some of the fundamental concepts behind the business continuity crisis management and emergency management we will see in this module so you are all aware that uh, the lockdown started uh, somewhere in january uh, 24 and at a various stages now in uh, in the in parts of the country now this video will give a very uh, high level lockdown status across the globe uh, it started somewhere in end of january it started in china and slowly the lockdowns has spread into uh, italy and then slowly it started across the globe uh, this lockdown, uh, the situation, the current situation, the lockdown and the relaxations, uh, whatever has happened in the last 80 days, it grossly impacted our businesses. The, the grossly impacted our businesses and some of the organizations, they have business continuity planning, they have activated their business continuity planning and they are planning to restart their operations. Now, uh, everybody is aware that the entire lockdown covid lockdown situation is uh, the impacted and disrupted our businesses and the business continuity plan is required for the businesses now we let us understand these concepts what is the disruptions and uh, what is the impact on our businesses and what is business continuity plan in the following slides uh, now, if you see, there are two kinds of business disruptions generally happens. One is a gradual disruption. You can see on the left side, you can see a gradual disruption or a sudden disruptions are there in the business in, in interruptions. In a gradual di disruption, if you see in a graph, the capacity of operations and time, uh, if you uh, make a graph on this, there is an early warning system in gradual disruption. In a, suppose if it is a pandemic situation and approaching a pandemic, somewhere you have an early warning and you know that an incident is going to occur shortly. So those who has business continuity plans in their organization, they have an early warning system and they can ramp down their operations and they can prepare for the incident. Once the incident strikes, they will maintain for certain times and they will further ramp it down to a minimum acceptable capacity of their operations. And then slowly, once the recovery started, they will come back to normalcy very quickly. If the an organization doesn't have business continuity plan they cannot they won't act anything during the warning stage they will wait till the incident happens once the in incident happens due to the impact the capacity of operations will go down below acceptable capacity and they experience financial uh, losses and many other aspects and then they will continue further for a long prolonged period and slowly they will recover their business into normal operations it takes really long time so the business continuity plan is the most important thing 
The same way, if you see a sudden disruption, suppose an explosion has taken, taken place or an incident taken place in an organization, what happens both the business, con uh, the organization with a business continuity plan and organization without business continuity plan, suddenly they will drop the production. However, the organization has business continuity plan, they can go up to the capacity, minimum capacity and then slowly they will recover. Whereas the organization doesn't have business continuity plan, they have to suffer a lot and then slowly it takes very long time for recovery. So if you see in the both the cases, in a, whether it is a gradual disruption or a sudden disruption, there is an impact on organization. The disruption definitely impacts the organization in terms of a reputational damage, regulatory fines, financial losses or contractual penalties. It again, it depends on the uh, time frame. If it is a short disruption, and if it is a short disruption like one hour or if it is a if it is a days and if it is weeks it is an acceptable point you can able to it, the impact is an acceptable point but if it is more than weeks it may the cumulative impact may be beyond the acceptable point and uh, organizations has to uh, see all these uh, uh, they have to experience the reputational loss regulatory fines financial losses and continual penalties now in the current covid scenario you can see that we have around 80 days we have disrupted our businesses so our impact is cumulative impact is very high and if we don't have a business continuity plan in our organization we have to suffer a lot during the recovery phase so uh, now let us just understand some of the concepts what we have discussed here, the business continuity plan and crisis management and emergency management. Probably most of you people might have come across these uh, term terminology. Let us explain, uh, let us see what exactly this terminology means. Now, if you see the emergency management, emergency management primarily deals with the workplace incidents or workplace accidents. It is mainly human element is there in the emergency management. Uh, emergency management. In case of a business continuity, the activities or a supply chain interruptions or a critical equipment day breakdown, such kind of a, uh, activities fall under business continuity management, where you have a partially for some time you may not be able to continue your business because of the supply chain interruptions or a critical equipment breakdowns. So in such cases, the business continuity plan activates that. Whereas in a crisis management, normally if there is a financial irregularities or a product contaminations are there, normally the crisis management, they activate that. There are some areas or some uh, instances where you may have to activate two different plans simultaneously, say for example, emergency and crisis management in case in an incident is there and the, fat uh, the fatalities, the adequate response is not for, uh, there for, uh, for an incident fatalities, then you may have to activate both crisis management and emergency management. The same way, you may have to activate two different plans simultaneously. On some occasions, you may have to activate all the three plans together. Now, the current situation, if you see, most of the companies, they are suffering with the market losses and financial losses. Uh, they are suffering. So in such case, you may have to activate all the three plans together. And also, there is a clear responsibilities for who has to activate these plans. Now, if you see the responsibility matrix here, the facilities or a sites, a local sites are primarily dealing with the emergency because it is a human element is there to deal with that and directly frontline facilities are going to deal with the completely the emergency management. Whereas a divisions or a business units, they are responsible for the business continuity and sites and facilities to some extent for executing the business continuity plans, they will also involve in that. And the crisis management is totally related to the corporate uh, section and the business units will give inputs for developing the crisis management. So probably this may give a brief um, understanding of the fundamental concepts of crisis management, emergency management and business continuity. Now we are mainly, we are focusing on the business continuity because crisis management already most of the corporations they have activated and emergency management and business management, we need to see when we are opening up the business lockdown situations. Now let us see the business continuity. What is business continuity? Of course, here they have I have given the um, definition of business continuity is the process of creating a system of prevention and recovery to deal with potential threats to the company. Now current scenario is a COVID scenario, potential uh, prevention and recovery to deal with COVID threats to the company. So it has uh, fundamentally six components are there. It starts with a business impact assessment, 
there is a crisis management. We have already seen that. I'm going to talk about the business impact assessment a little later. And there is an emergency management. We need to see that. Uh, this is also, we have seen that. And there is a risk assessment. Once you open up the business, what kind of a risks are there? The risks could be operational risks, enterprise risks, or an information technology risks, or financial risks. It risks maybe many things. And once you identify the risks, there is an operational planning and control is necessary. And this operational planning and control, these things, impact assessment, crisis management, emergency management, risk assessment, and operational planning and control will lead to business recovery strategies. So the business continuity program has all these components inbuilt. So each component has to be dealt separately in the organization. And if you see the business recovery point of view, again, business recovery has, you start with a business impact assessment, plan the strategy, recovery strategy, and document every all your strategies, recovery strategies, prioritize your activities and train your employees. And then you need to have a pre-startup safety reviews. Before starting the operations, you need to conduct some kind of a safety reviews. And then return to work planning, you need to do that. Return to work planning has a hazard identification in the operations and vulnerability assessment, and then business continuity procedures to be developed. The new probably you may have to develop a new procedures in the organization. And then finally, implement the return to work program and you have to monitor and control the entire business recovery program. So this is a fundamental, I have, I'm discussing at a very high level, each and every activity in this has a separate, uh, uh, you know, a detailed process is there to manage that. So this is the fundamentals in uh, uh, understanding the, uh, uh, current scenario. So we started with a lockdown situation and the global lockdown situation and how it impacted our businesses. We have seen that. And uh, then we have checked about various management concepts and business continuity programs and business recovery programs. We have seen that. So that we have an, we can relate the current scenario with the performance management. Now we have to go to the actual performance management and actual performance planning activity. So in the section two, the performance planning activity, uh, we will start with the business impact assessment and the business uh, how the business impact assessment is going to uh, affect our strategy or how uh, the requirements for refining the strategy we will see from the refining the strategy we will see the balance scorecards um, or an organizational scorecards performance scorecards and uh, i'll give a very overview on the networks also i'll give a very high level uh, overview on networks let us see before going to the business impact we need to understand what is the external and internal context of an organization. Now, if you see any ISO document, these terms are very popular, external and internal context of the organization. In any organization, there is a, uh, for establishing any organization, there is a purpose of the organization and there are few products and services they serve the customers and they have certain business activities are there in the organization and some sort of supporting organizations uh, like marketing, sales, op, uh, maintenance, safety, people are there. And also there are certain assets and resources to support the organization. The organization have a suppliers and partners and customers also exist. Now, the internal context talks completely within the organization, means the organizational activities, departments, assets and resources, and the management team. It deals with the internal, uh, uh, the internal context deals with these uh, uh, parameters. And the external context, the remaining things, whatever is external to the organization are all dealt with the external context. Now, the COVID scenario, you need to assess your business impact both in terms of internal context as well as an external context. So if you see that before going for any business impact assessment, you need to identify your scope, whether you, uh, what is the internal context and external context you need to define properly. You need to identify a team members who can do the business impact assessment. You have to assign the roles and responsibilities to those team members. And you need to uh, provide, you need to give a timelines for completing the business assessment. These are all the prerequisites for any business impact assessment. Once the team is finalized, once all the prerequisite uh, pre conditions are satisfied, then the actual business impact assessment process will start. In the actual business impact assessment process, uh, one has to identify the products and services prioritization initially. And once they identify the products and services prioritization, 
they have to go for process prioritization and process prioritization to activity prioritization once they have prioritized all these activities they need to analyze these priorities and they have to consolidate and for, uh, and get a management approval for a certain changes in the uh, organizational processes and to document these changes these are all uh, uh, this can be done with a subject matter experts and a network management committee so you need to form a committee and the committee uh, committee with a few subject matter experts from operations marketing sales finance hr people and those people can uh, do the entire business impact assessment with the help of an external uh, external consultant or external uh, uh, you know external support you can complete the business impact assessment now if you see the business impact assessment process when you are changing uh, uh, the priorities of a product priorities process priorities and activation priorities these changes will definitely impact the overall business strategy when uh, uh, certain activities are impacting the overall business strategy the business strategy in turns impacts organizational financials organizational customer services and organizational processes and also it impacts the individual employee so you mean to say uh, uh, if, if you see that the business impact assess uh, the business whatever we have seen the current scenario in the covid covid scenario affected our businesses businesses affected the uh, uh, we have assessed the business impact assessment here and the business impact assessment changes the strategy strategy affects all these uh, key uh, perspectives in an organization it changes that now to refine a strategy when a strategy is changed that you need to refine the strategy in order to refine the strategy there are certain conditions you need to see that now uh based on the strategy strategic changes overall strategic changes you need to identify the new business objectives based on the current scenario on the based on the uh impact assessment you need to identify new business objectives the or modified business objectives when you are defining the modified business objectives it is always better to go with a smart strategy i think probably most of you may be aware of what is a smart it is a specific measurable attainable relevant and time bound objectives you need to identify so once you identify these objectives all the objectives has to be fed to the strategy and you need to develop a strategy mapping in the strategy mapping process all these objectives are interlinked and finally it will lead towards financial gains most of these organizations except few non profitable organizations everybody is looking for a financial gains so each and every activity we are uh, conducting in a business uh, environment it should lead to financial goods a good strategy map will lead all the internal activities towards a financial gains now as we have seen that the strategy impacts financial customers and operational process and employees let us segment these uh, four in a big bucket and based on the objectives and the based on the strategy mapping we need to identify the key performance indicators or a new initiatives or initiatives in an organization under these financial customer service internal process and employee involvement and growth areas we need to identify kpis now from business impact assessment you you have developed objectives from objectives you have developed the strategy from the strategy you identified kpis and initiatives so this way you can refine the strategy and you can prepare the uh, background for performance management system or a, um, a refined performance management system now let me give you a very brief overview on balance scorecard probably most of you people are aware of what is balance scorecard the balance scorecard is a wonderful tool to realize the organization's vision and strategy um, uh, vision and strategy to the ground level so it has fundamentally four perspectives financial perspective customer perspective internal processes and learning and growth these are all the four perspectives are there in the balance scorecard an organization need to identify objectives measures targets and initiatives now if you see a sample indicative balance scorecard it looks something like this there are four perspectives are there financial customer internal process learning and growth each perspective has certain weightages depends on the organization the weight factor can be decided by individual like if it is a financial organization like a banks probably this weight factor may be more if a manufacturing organization probably the weight factor will be more 
However, there is a total summation of all these weight factors put together in a four perspectives. It may be either 100 or 1000. Some organizations, they go for 100. Some organizations go for 1000. Here I have kept as 100 as a total weight factor. So in each perspective, uh, there are certain KPIs are there. KPIs means key performance indicators. And also you need, you need to identify certain initiatives in each perspective. So again, uh, the overall bucket has a financial, has a weight factor. Each individual KPA has a separate weight factor for that. And the summation of all these weight factors will add to this uh, uh, weight factor for the uh, uh, perspective weight factor. It matches with the perspective weight factor. And the KPIs has an objective, it has a target, and there is a mechanism to identify or mechanism to record achieved percentage of against the targets. Uh, this is the fund, uh, this is a very brief. Uh, you know, it's a simplified balance scorecard model. So this, uh, in this uh, webinar, I have uh, given the balance scorecard model for the organizational performance management. So from the next slides onwards, I will talk about these four perspectives and how to integrate with these four perspectives, the strategy and all, I will explain you. And uh, yeah, once you identify an organizational scorecard from strategy in all those four perspectives, these organizational scorecards need to be cascaded down to up to the individual level. The organization scorecard will cascade down to business unit levels, from business unit levels to the location levels, locations to departments, and departments to teams and teams to an individual. It has to cascade down that. So I will show you in the implementation process, I will show how to cascade down all these uh, uh, scorecards into an individual level, I will show it to you. And again, uh, um, in this uh, planning process, uh, another critical thing is a networks or a committees. Uh, you need to have a performance uh, management network or a performance management committee in your organization. And leaders alone, they cannot uh, execute every activity. They have plans and uh, leaders and uh, plans and people to execute result into any uh, ideas or uh, concepts into reality. So these, uh, the process can be realized using these networks. The networks, an overview, if you see that, a network has a leader, he is the overall responsibility um, uh, for the committee or the network, and he is an ultimate authority for managing the entire committee. In the uh, network, there are certain subject matter experts are associated with the network as a core members. These members probably, they may come from finance, marketing, sales, operations, HR, or safety, et cetera. And these subject matter experts, what they do in the performance management network, they will review the organizational performance or they will review the performance scorecards of the organization, identify the gaps and prioritize the gaps and assign these uh, uh, action items to various uh, uh, members in the organization. And also there is a bigger group of coordinators or field members are there. These field members normally they record the performance. They go gather the information, the data, they record the performance and they report to the subject matter experts. And also what they do, they help in distributing the action items to the field members and they will ensure the field members completed the action items and they will report back to the subject matter experts. When it comes to the implementation part, I will explain how the network operates, but here I want to give a very overview of what is network or a committee. Now, uh, if you see that, uh, uh, in this section we have seen, uh, we started with a business impact assessment and we saw how the business impact assessment affects the organizational strategy and four perspectives of uh, uh, organizational uh, key perspectives. And we have also seen what is a balance scorecard. It's a very brief overview of balance scorecard and how the strategies are translated into organization scorecards and how we need to plan from organization scorecard to individual departments to up to the team member level. And we have seen also an overview of networks. Now let us see the implementation part. The, in the implementation part, in a management system implementation part, you need to have a fundamental, uh, you need to start with an inputs to the system and how to score, cascade the scorecards to various levels, how to align ex, uh, organization or a department uh, objectives in different uh, scorecards and what is the underlying conditions and implementation methodologies we can see in this. Uh, yeah, to start with inputs for the system, yeah, the 
entire process we started with a business impact assessment of course the introduction there is a business recovery strategies a business recovery plans are there let us start with a business impact uh, assessment at a very high level i want to discuss the inputs required for a system uh, we need to have a business impact assessment and uh, from business impact assessment we need to identify the objectives or business impact assessment or a SWOT analysis and some people they call it as a pastel analysis in a normal uh, conditions from the business impact assessment you need to identify the objectives from the objectives you need to develop a strategy and the strategy uh, or a refined strategy from the refined strategy you need to identify performance indicators from performance indicators you need to have a clear targets you need to have that so these are all the prerequisites for any performance management system implementation of course there are some other things are there like a short-term business plan and a long-term business plans also you need to consider that um, yes these are, these are all the minimum required things for starting any performance management system once you have all these things uh you need you have an organizational kpis from the strategy map from these kpis you need to cascade down you need to see that whether the kpi is relevant to the business unit then you need to cascade down the kpi to a business a relevant business unit and an initiative is a, a relevant to a specific business unit you need to cascade down to a specific business unit those initiatives has to cascade down that way you need to uh, from organization, we need to uh, cascade down the uh, key performance indicators to the business unit. From business unit, you need to put into locations, locations to departments, and departments to individuals. Even when you are uh, assigning the initiatives, the initiatives has to go at a various levels. But everybody has a certain targets. At the end, when you roll up all these things, uh, the initiatives or KPIs are uh towards the organizational broad objectives so you need to cascade down so you may have to develop multiple scorecards at various levels depends on the organization complexity and the number of employees you may have to uh, develop multiple scorecards once the scorecards are there like if you see like if you see that alignment an individual member say for example a member is a mechanic is there mechanic is supporting a field equipment group the field equipment group is a part of maintenance department maintenance department is a part of a canadian business operations canadian business operation is a part of oil exploration oil exploration may be a part of a corporate of a big large oil and gas corporation like you can see a mechanic work you can align with the corporate objectives a department work you can align with a corporate goals or a business unit operations can align with a business unit strategy um, a business location operations can be aligned with a business unit strategy so the roll up and alignments are there in the scorecards very accurately it is there again the they are we have discussed about an overview of a network and there is an hr department is there to look after the performance management of an individual so for an individuals the hr department look after the performance whereas for a corporate or a department or a location or a business unit networks will review the performance and they will adjust and fine tune the performance management system so this is a roll up of uh, a scorecard now let us see some of the conditions for implementing performance management system uh, in a performance management system uh, human resources development uh, hr uh, department uh, plays a major role and also in, as i mentioned that networks plays a major role in uh, uh, implementing a performance management system you need to define clearly the roles and responsibilities of a networks network members and network associates at the same time uh, hr department roles and responsibilities you need to define clearly and also you need to identify what is in it for me WIFM they call it as and you need to link this WIFM with a successful performance management most of the organizations they are uh, not effectively link the what's in it for me with their organizational performance management system and it leads to the system failure some of the examples of what is in it for me is you can see that people it is a motivational factors for the people to perform so organization performance linked bonuses and the recognitions uh, promotions probably a section plan for a leadership or a knowledge enhancement training these are all some of the motivational factors for anybody these motivational factors should appropriately link to the performance management system and act and there should be a system to accurately measure the employee performance individual employee performance i think balance scorecard will give a very accurate uh, 
uh, measurement and uh, it can be used for benchmarking also very easily. There are certain examples are there which are uh, uh, like suspension of work, uh, uh, changes to existing scope of work also to some extent uh, it helps in improving the performance but these are all the negative, there is a negative impact is there and normally the organizations they won't you, you, they won't apply to the individual employees. Uh, some organizations they apply to the contract departments or contracts they do that but this, this such kind of um, uh, a negative motivation um, negative motivational factors we should not use into that it is not recommended to use uh, such kind of parameters we should not link it to performance management system now uh, as i mentioned in the performance management system there are two things one is the kpis means key performance indicatives the other one is an initiatives you have two uh, different things are there key performance in in initiatives and in, uh, uh, key performance indicators and initiatives are the programs now how to implement any program or a, any key performance in, indicators in an organization here you can see that for example if you see a performance indicators all the performance indicators, whatever it is there in the balance scorecard or in your organizational scorecard should be supported with an appropriate work plan. Say for example, a training plan, an annual training plan is an example. So it has to develop an appropriate work plans and there is an, uh, you need to implement those work plans in the organization and periodically report the performance. Maybe be, it depends on the organization uh, system, maybe monthly, quarterly or half yearly, they need to report the performance management system and periodically review the effectiveness of those performance indicators. It just if there is any requirements out there, just if you need to fine tune the target and again, go for the next work plans so the cycle continues so this is the methodology for implementing any kpi in an organization if you see a program yep program or an initiative if you start a new program or a new initiative like employee satisfaction survey or a behavioral based safety if you want to initiate a program or a objective it has to develop it has to start with a charter you need to identify the scope of the initiative and the objectives of the initiative and then develop implementation plans for those uh, initiatives develop documentation a detailed documentation you need to uh, explain what is expected out of the program or initiative and how to uh, achieve that objectives you need to document that and try and all the uh, associated people in those documentation and the process develop milestones you need to identify milestones for achieving a certain objective or a certain initiative you need to identify milestones or some places they call it as a performance indicators these performance then you need to implement the program once you implement the program periodically review the program effectiveness and refine the performance indicators or a milestones you, you have to refine that so any initiative you want to implement in an organization, this is the process you need to follow that. So these are all two uh, basic methodologies for implementing any performance indicators or any initiatives in an organization. Now, if you see the recap of this section, uh, we started with uh, inputs to the system, and then uh, we have seen how to cascade these um, uh, scorecards into different levels and how to align an individual employee, a mechanic, uh, uh, work to an organizational objectives and we have also seen underlying conditions and what is in it for me and finally we have seen certain implementation methodologies basic implementation methodologies we have seen in implementation uh, now if you see that the review process the review process is a, a, a most important thing so i'm trying to take you through the pdca cycle i think uh, some of the people who understands the iso concept the pdca is a a critical thing. So I'm, I'm trying to take you through all the PDCA process here. In this review process, we will see how to activate network and what, uh, how the networks operates and uh, how to conduct a performance review and how to assign actions and uh, to various teams, departments, individuals, and what is expected out of the system and how to conduct benchmarking, how to establish benchmarkings in uh, performance management, we'll see in this. To start with the network activation, before activating a network or a, a committee, you need to identify um, certain things. You, you, they have certain phases are there. The first phase is to identify the, uh, the scope of the network. You need to identify the scope of the network and objectives of the network and you need to document clearly. Then you need to identify subject matter experts 
uh, uh, for the network. As I mentioned to you, it has a leader, network has a leader, subject matter experts and field coordinators. These are all the key people in the network. So you, you need to identify the people and uh, train the members appropriately for the entire network operations. Once you train them, induct them into the network operations and then assign appropriate roles and responsibilities to, the, to those network members. And those network members will start working in the network and they will streamline the operations, network operations. They conduct meetings, they record minutes, assign actions, reviews, and all kinds of activities they do as per the network uh, scope and objective. And they manage the action items, meetings, and the um, establishment. They manage that and they finally they refine that. So the network activation has certain phases, like starting from the scope selection to the uh, scope identification to the selection of the members, training, inducting them, and managing them and refining the entire network operations. This is the network operation runs. And in the operations point of view, all the field employ i mean fields or various um, uh, field conditions they they working uh, on these um, performance indicators and uh, field teams normally uh, record the performance these uh, rec performances uh, the field uh, performance records are captured by network coordinators and they report to the network team members the network team members review identify gaps action items and generate a report and uh, give that report to the network lead for an approval. Once the network lead reviews the report and identify, check the gaps and action items and with the help of network members, he approves that and he send it, sends back the finalized report back to the network team members. These network team members, after approval of the report, they will identify action items, they prioritize the actions and they assign to various teams in the field those uh, action items prioritized action items are collected by the network coordinators and they distribute to the team members and fields come uh, field teams completes the action items again they record the performance and again the cycle continues that so the networks are a committees operates in the same fashion we will see some of those uh, uh, activities in detail in the coming slides uh, even the one of the critical thing, um, one of the most important thing for a network members is to uh, conduct performance reviews. Uh, you have a many scorecards in an organization, and all the scorecards are uh, comes to the network members for a review. So the re review process uh, also it should be robust and it should be systematic. Uh, there are two kinds. Of, the reviews are maybe they can conduct on initiatives or a programs. They can conduct or a key performance indicators they may have to conduct the reviews so for a, conducting a review the systematic process for, is for a key performance indicators they have to start with the results whatever the performance results from the field whatever they have collected from that they need to check the approach whether the field has a, approached in obtaining the results in an appropriate way or not they need to identify first they need to see the planning process they need to see uh, and then they have to check whether the deployment of the uh, indicators, the approach is proper or not, they need to identify. They have to check whether they are periodically assessing that, whether they are refining the assessment process, there is a uh, refinement process existed or not, they have to see. And again, the cycle continues that. And uh, when it comes to an initiative, uh it, the initiatives or a programs so you need to start with the, whether the initiative is a sound and integrated with the planning or not whether it is deployed structure structured manner or not you need to see efficient supervision and reviews are, are there or not with and whether they are identifying gaps and the gaps are prioritized properly and the close the gaps and whether they are refining or not you need to see that so the performance reviews there is a basis for uh, reviewing initiatives and KPIs and uh, the networks has to follow this process when reviewing the performance and uh, once they have conducted the review on scorecards they will get a list of action items now all the performance management system we have under four major headings we have done four major perspectives we have we got the um, uh, the scorecards the action items also they will segregate into four different categories the financial categories customers and internal perspective and growth categories these action items they need to put into a priority matrix to identify what is first priority what is the last priority they need to identify that in order to keep it under a priority matrix they need to identify what is the high risk 
uh, the actions resulting high risks and the actions requires a high effort or a low effort, they need to see that. So all the first priorities, when there is a low effort and high risk is there, it comes under first priority. High effort and high risk is in the second, uh, second priority and low risk and low effort is third priority and the high effort and low risk is a fourth priority, it comes there. So all these action items, they have to segregate into this priority matrix. Once they have segregated, they can assign this action to the individual team members. The networks will implement into that. I mean, uh, they will assign this to a team members. Now, if you see uh, the systems, what is the inputs and outputs to the entire uh, performance management system? If you see uh, the inputs for the management system is a vision, objectives, strategies, SWOT analysis, special analysis, and all those things, and strategy map, uh, short term plans, uh, initiatives, KPIs, and uh, previous network meetings, action status action items, status of uh, action items. Updated scorecards are the inputs for any network and the network output is performance strengths and gaps they will identify. List of actions and they do the prioritization. Action uh, Actions they will assign to different uh, people for closing the gaps. Refine KPIs, targets or programs if it is required. And they also conduct performance reports. They conduct performance reports. So these are all the inputs and, and outputs to any uh, performance management system. Now it comes to the benchmarking of the performance. As I mentioned that uh, this uh, in the balance scorecard, you can align individual objectives with an organizational objective and also uh, department objectives with uh, organizational objective precisely. And when you have an, when an organization has a multiple locations or a multiple business units, they can benchmark within the uh, business units or if they have any known data for an external benchmarking, they can even do the benchmarking with an external agencies. The balance scorecard helps in benchmarking these activities very accurately because the, in the balance scorecard, you are quantifying all the results uh, to against a specific uh, number, whether it may be 100 or 1000, you are quantifying the scorecard uh, result, whether it may be an individual or a department. So if you utilize use the standardized scoring method and the standardized approaches what we have discussed earlier in analyzing and reviewing the uh, performance indicators and initiatives you can easily benchmark um, between departments between business units between individuals you can easily benchmark with the scores you can do that also when you are verifying an individual scorecard uh, the trends uh, targets, trends, benchmarks, and justifications for uh, the trends, you need to focus on that uh, while doing this benchmark. And you need to see whether they are accurate, whether they are sound, whether they are integrated with your system, you need to see that. So these are all some of the things you need to consider for benchmarking a performance. Yes, now the section is, um, um, we have seen um, network activation, how they perform the network uh, networks in an organization, we have seen that. And performance review process, we have seen. And action management, how the actions are um, derived out of performance review. And we have seen that, what is the inputs and outputs of the uh, management system. And finally, we have seen the benchmarking of uh, the scorecards we have seen in this, uh, uh, in this short section. Now, the final section is a, a, simply, a simple section, actually. This is a refinement and continuous improvements. So uh, the networks plays a lead role in uh, imp uh, continuous improvements and refining, and they are um, leading as an advisory role. And uh, normally the networks, after conducting the reviews, they, um, uh, they can identify uh, the re refinement and continuous improvement uh, um, activities, continuous improvement, uh, uh, scope for continuous improvement in objectives, strategies, KPIs, and also they can refine the targets and overall program object objectives or any, any implementation plans they can identify and they can assign through uh, field coordinators to various members, they can do that. So refinement and continuous improvement process is also part of your network. So with this, uh, Almost, we have completed the entire presentation. It is a heavy, um, uh, heavy, and many concepts are discussed in this presentation. If you see uh, from the starting, if you see, we started with a COVID lockdown situation, and we have seen what is business interruptions, and uh, some uh, checked some of the fundamental concepts of management concepts. Then we have seen what is business continuity and what is business recovery, and we'll 
it led to our business impact assessment. From here, the planning process started. Once the business impact assessment is there, you need to refine the strategy. Once you refine the strategy, you need to develop organizational scorecards and you need to plan for the networks in your organization. And then the, when it comes to the implementation part, you need to see what is the inputs, the re prerequisites for any organization uh, to establish a management system. You have seen that. And then how to cascade these uh, business objectives into a department level or an individual level, we have seen that. How we need to align an individual to a department objective or an organizational objective, we have seen that. Subsequently, we have seen what is in it for me, like a, uh, conditions uh, for motivational factors for performance management we have seen and various methodologies for reviewing KPIs and initiatives we have seen that and how to activate networks and the network operations we have seen performance reviews how the networks has to conduct the performance reviews we have seen that and uh, once the action items are there how to deal with the action items how to prioritize that action items we have seen then we have gone for the system output and benchmarking we have seen and finally we have seen the refinement and continuous improvements we have seen that so this is a lot of concepts were discussed in a very short one hour presentation and if anybody wants any further reference they can go to an international standards these are all some of the international standards you can refer to but uh, these standards are mainly focused on business impact assessment and uh, uh, you know, business continuity plan uh, management, but they may not be on a balanced scorecard. Um, you can always refer these international standards. You can refer that. Thank you very much for uh, uh, your patient listening. And let me know in case if you have any mm -hmm. questions or uh, yep. any clarifications. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Rama, for a very, very intriguing presentation. Uh, and uh, thank you for turning on the webcam. So folks, we are now ready for Q&A session. If you have any questions, you could either insert in the question and answers box. There's a Q&A box on your console. Please feel free to insert your questions. Or you could equally raise your hand. There's a hand icon available on your console, mobile consoles, webinar consoles. So you can raise your hand and I'll unmute you so you can even have an audio conversation with Dr. Rama. Let me quickly go to the question box for the first one from uh, Dr. Muhammad Muhammad. Uh, could you please explain the internal and external benchmarking processes, Dr. Rama? Okay, uh, let me go back to the presentation once. Uh, I think I'm, I'm trying to see an appropriate slide for explaining the concept. Yeah, now if you see this, uh, the cascading uh, performance. Now what happened, the organizational scorecards are there and the organizational scorecards we have cascaded down up to the individual levels we have cascaded it down. Now, every uh, the performance scorecards, uh, as I mentioned that every scorecard, if you see whether it is an organization scorecard or an individual scorecard, it has all four perspectives are there. Suppose if, um, uh, and these four perspectives are with the weight factors are there and the summation of this weight factor, it is going to be 100 that. Uh, in this case, it is 100. So organization scorecard is measured against 100 um, score and as an individual also, it is measured against 100 score and in between departments, everything is between 100 scores. Now, when you, when you start implementing and the network started reviewing and recording the performance management, each and every department, each and every individual, each and every business unit has to report their performance against the value of 100. So you can easily benchmark between two different departments. You can have a score of uh, actual weight factors when you calculate actual weight factors. And if you check that, you can uh, distinguish between two different uh, departments you can easily uh, compare. Probably this department may be 87%, uh, they might have got that out of 100 marks, and this department may be about 76. You can easily uh, benchmark between two departments. The same way, between two individuals, uh, an individual might have recorded his performance of about uh, out of 100, he might have recorded about 110. Sometimes they may go beyond their targets, right? 110. Another employee has recorded only 97. You can easily benchmark within two uh, different uh, employees, you can benchmark that. So balanced scorecard will give the flexibility to 
compare between employees, between departments, between school, uh, between different people. And of, suppose an external benchmarking when other organizational similar kind of an, uh, say for example, you are a financial institution with another financial institution you are comparing. A bank with another bank is comparing. This bank is implemented a balance scorecard and they are measuring out of, out of 100. The other bank is also measuring out of 100. You can compare within two different uh, you know, two different uh, organizations external to your organization. Also, you can compare very act accurately and very in a scientific manner. I hope I ha answered your question. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Rama. And let me move to the participants. Uh, we have a few callers who have raised their hand. The first one is uh, Brother Ala Abdul Hadi. Uh, Brother Ala, I've just uh, unmuted you. Could you please quickly introduce yourself and ask the question? Yes, Brother Allah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ram, for your beautiful presentation. This is Al from Canada, where everybody now is, is changing their lifestyle and work from home. Um, since we now realize uh, the importance of business continuity program, uh, I'm wondering how can I establish a business continuity program in my organization? Uh, what is the indicative timeline for this establish the establishing this uh, plan also um, let us know if the indicative timeline for revising performance management system with an example sure um, mr Allah, i i will give actually uh, i have developed a few backup slides because normally when uh, we implement uh, this system uh, people they ask about the timelines and uh, implementation process they ask that but we need to understand one thing depends on the complexity of the organization depends on the employee size the team size these things vary from uh, company to company and uh, i'll give uh, uh, some examples i will try to give uh, i think you have asked about business continuity yeah See now, if you see that in your, um, uh, with reference to your question, the business continuity plan is uh, uh, the most important. Can you see my slides? I think you yes, can, I can see, see my it, slides. Yeah. Right? yeah, your business continuity plan is most important because if the, if the organization doesn't have a business continuity plan, the recovery will take a longer time and they need to face a lot of uh, uh, impact from the business disruptions. So business continuity is most important. And when you establish this business continuity plan, uh, as I mentioned to you, like uh, you need to have certain kind of, uh, you know, uh, the components you need to require, like um, you need to conduct a business impact assessment, crisis management, emergency management, risk management, operational planning and business recovery, you have to do that. There is an indicative timelines I have given, but I cannot uh, say that again, I was saying that it is depends on the complexity of the organization and availability of team members. It may change that. Probably it may take about a six months, it may take for business continuity and uh, business continuity operation. The same way, uh, if you see, because generally people, they will ask about the timelines and uh, the things. So I have created a few slides about this uh, uh, business recovery also. In the business recovery plans, I have only talked about COVID scenario here. The COVID scenario, if you want to do the entire business recovery, documentation, training, and the work plans, and you need to hazard assessment, vulnerability assessment, and all if you want to conduct. It takes roughly about two to three months time. Again, I was telling that it is depends on the complexity of the organization. And for in, in terms of business impact assessment, if you want to conduct the, in the for the COVID scenario, I, I'll talk about that. And the COVID scenario, if you want to establish your prerequisites and uh, prioritization of your products, processes, activity prioritization, and to uh, get a management approval for the business impact assessment. It may be probably take 15 to one month time. However, this business impact assessment has to be conducted with the subject matter experts within the organization. So the subject matter experts are very much required for that. And we need to see the availability of those subject matter experts for the network to operate. And this is an indicative timeline. So I have mentioned it to you. And as you told about the, uh, uh, you know, uh, some of the timelines for the implementation of balance scorecard. Again, the balance scorecard, it depends on number of business units, the number of locations, departments, and the team size. It depends on that. It has primarily three different stages are there. It's a planning stage and implementation stage and sustainment stage. Any performance management system or a balance scorecard. 
for a very small organizations with a small team size, probably the planning will take about two months and implementation will take about two months and sustainment will take anyhow, at least you should have at least two years of data in your hand to check whether the organization is sustainable or not. So from second year onwards, you can see some kind of a sustainment. For a medium organization, complex organizations, you can see. I'll give you the specific example, uh, but I don't want to name who is the, uh, what is the name of the organization. I have conducted, a, um, I have implemented a complete um, uh, performance management system implementation for an organization, an UAE based organization in 2015. And uh, the organization has, but uh, you know, when I have implemented this uh, system for them, there is no time pressure on uh, the organization for implementation. And it has a two shift operations, about 200 product lines are there. They are manufacturing about 250 products. They are manufacturing in three different locations. They have about 14 departments and a team size of around 250 employees, excluding contract employees. And during the discussions, they have told me that 14 different departments into three locations plus three business, uh, uh, three locations plus one organization total, 46 scorecards to be designed for them. And for this, if you see an indicative timelines are something like this, but as I mentioned to you, there is no time pressure for implementation in this. Uh, objectives were developed in two weeks, strategy mapping in two months, we have developed that. Again, here, availability of the senior leaders for the interviews and all, it took some time. And uh, KPIs development took some time, about four months. And But the scorecards took really a lot of time because about 46 scorecards they asked me to design. And it took uh, uh, almost about six months it took for me and then implementation tracking on all it took that. From 2018 onwards, I know that they have sustained their business operations and they are now effectively running their uh, performance management in a very smooth and consistent manner. So I hope this gives a very indicative timelines uh, to people. Uh, I think I have covered the things. Yeah, um, I, I think I have covered your uh, um, yeah. question. Thank yeah. you. Th thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ola, for a very interesting question. Uh, now, let me quickly uh, unmute. Uh, we have Ms. Uh, Soraya Sovgon. Uh, if I pronounce it correctly, could you please uh, unmute your microphone and quickly introduce yourself and ask the question? Yeah. Hi, uh, Dr. Rama. Uh, I'm Surya from UK, son of Subara Palagumi. Hope you know him very well. Uh, coming back to my question, uh, if you please can go to the refinement and continuous implement slide. There, uh, can you explain how do you refine and continuous implement for program objectives? Okay, very good. Uh, yeah, this particular slide you are asking, right? On this objective, yes. how we refine that, right? You are asking, yes, right? Yes, basically me... on the program objectives. Yes, Surya. I will let me just take you back to one of the uh, thing. Like, say, for example, if you go to the initiative, any initiative, program initiatives or objectives, if you say that, what happened, you need to start with an, uh, any initiative or a program. If you start with whether it is a planning is a proper or not, whether it is a sound planning is there or integrated is there, whether it is an initiative has it deployed properly or not, whether it is an initiative or a strategy even, you can take as a strategy as an initiative or an objective as an initiative, you can take that. Whether the objective is properly uh, you know, uh, identified, whether they have done a proper business impact assessment as a backup for that, whether you have implemented after implementing the strategy, after identifying the strategy, whether you have implemented properly with an efficient performance management system or not, and whether you are supervising efficiently with an efficient network or not, and these gaps are identified in the network, and the gaps identified are prioritized and close the gaps inappropriately with the field teams, and the field teams and the networks sat together and refine the performance uh, improvements or not, we need to see that and we need to put back into the strategy. Once you refine, like say for example, now you you wanted to have a sales target of about a $1 million for uh, 2020, but because of the COVID situation, about 80 days, if you have lost that, it is, it is an external factor. It is not an internal, uh, um, uh, any internal um, uh, disturbance. 
so now you know that you may not be able to achieve 1 million uh, uh, sales target and you are pretty well you have a smart objectives are there right i was talking about uh, you know pretty sure that uh, let me go back to this one yeah you know pretty sure that it is a specific target measurable target but it is not an attainable target you need to refine the target you know the targets you need to refine that these refinements will be given by the network members because they are the subject matter experts and they have unbiased and they have seen the across the organization they will refine the targets and they will propose to the management that uh, the network lead they will propose i remember I, I showed you right this network members they will propose to that and the lead will take the authority lead means nothing but the ceo or a general manager and they will refine the targets that way they need to refine uh, you know the yeah. targets so I thought I I think uh, you yeah. you got my yes you got thank my. you very much uh, yeah. very it was an interesting session thank you thank you hey, thank you very much Zoria for asking a very interesting question now let me go back to the question box we have another one from Guntuko uh, the Guntuko the question is networks are internal to an organization or external. Oh, it's a it's another good question, uh, uh, Guntaku. Uh, what happened? Networks can be both internal and external. But here in this presentation, we talked about internal network. Now uh, you remember the first question the, the person asked me whether do we need to go for an external benchmarking or internal benchmarking. So now if you want to do an external benchmarking and if you want to have an external data, you want to collect that, you may have to have an external network. But in this presentation, we have discussed only internal networks, but external networks are for uh, development of the sector, uh, for development of the sector. Say, for example, if you are working in oil and gas industry, you have an external network for uh, developing the oil and gas sector in the country or maybe in the globe. But internal network is purely for focusing on the internal organization. You can establish a networks for both internal as well as external. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gintoko. Uh, and uh, let me move to another one from Brother Adil al -Kaf. The question is, I think this system is suitable for profit organization. Do you think this is suitable for non-profit as well? Well, uh, it's a good uh, question. Like we have told everything that strategy mapping when we are doing. Let me go back to the uh, slide on the strategy mapping slide. Uh, You know, here I was telling that about the, we need to go for the financial gains, right? Uh, the, organ the entire strategy map has to be aligned with the financial gain. But I think probably who has some experience on strategy and strategy mapping, they can see this uh, system can be applied for both profit and non-profitable organizations. Even if you take a non-profitable organization, there is an operating cost is there for an organization to uh, spend. So you need to, at least you need to get the operational cost by in the form of donations or in the form of uh, CSR collections, you need to get those operational expenses. When means definitely you have a financial element in your organization. At the same time, a, a non-profitable organization has a specific, uh, uh, it is heavily on the customer service. They have a heavy, uh, you know, uh, KPIs on customer service and operational process and individuals are there. So even for a non-profitable organization, even though if it is not on the financial gains, at least whatever is coming to the organization, it is not going, I mean, uh, you can balance whatever the income and uh, the expenditure you can balance even in a non-profitable organization by implementing this balance scorecard. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me go to another question we had from brother, uh, supplementary from Dr. Muhammad. What is the role of data analytics in managing strategy and risks? Uh, role of data analytics in managing strategy and risk. Okay. Uh, yes, business analysts are there as a part of uh, analyzing the business scorecards. Now, what happened when you have cascaded down the scorecards? In terms of the scorecards, if you see, 
an organization. I was telling you one example with I have designed about 46 scorecards for an organization, about 250 employees. So when you have a lot of data has come from various uh, places, whether it may be from an organization or a business unit or location or department, it will come. In fact, it has sum up. It is a rolls up to the organization level. It rolls up that. So you need to identify trends, targets, and you need to analyze the entire data for uh, like a trend analysis and how it goes and all those things you need to do that so a lot of uh, uh, business analytics work is uh, is there the data analysis work is there in uh, reviewing all these scorecards and uh, structuring it into a, a proper way and aligning it and reporting uh, um, requirements are there data analyst requirements are there in terms of a strategy mapping uh, uh, i Again, uh, I think in the strategy mapping is uh, the data analysts work may not be there in the strategy mapping. It is a primarily senior leaderships they involve in that and they develop the strategy maps. But when you are measuring the organizations and analyzing the organization scorecards, definitely that analyst uh, role is most important. And they support uh, network members. I hope I answered your question. So thank you very much. Um, uh, and uh, let me, how, let, and there's another short one from Dr. Muhammad again. How can we manage communication and culture needed to realize this strategy? Sorry, can it, how can we manage communication? Okay. Or communication and culture needed to realize the strategy. Communication and culture uh, to realize strategy. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> This is a bit, uh, well, I'll answer the question in a slightly different uh, way. You see, the conditions for implementation, when I discussed about that, you need to define the roles and responsibilities. You need to define this one clearly. When you are realizing the strategy, it should be a successful performance management. You need to identify what is in it for me. They are, uh, uh, the uh, when it comes to a culture, uh, the cultural aspects are, important and of course sometimes uh, you need to if you can able to identify the culture what culture is uh, demanding in the performance management system if you can able to define here i think you can easily link with that and uh, the communication part when it comes to that in any methodologies when you are implementing any communication see that developing the documentation and the training in case of any initiatives when you are implementing the training plays a major role and also you need to document the things, implement the implementation plans, developing the charter. These are all the things we need to communicate properly. Even if you see the development of work plans, impl uh, implementation of work plans, the, in, in, at this stage, the communication really plays an important role. And uh, you need to identify the what's in it for me and you need to link successfully with the performance management system. I think, uh, um, yeah, again, it depends on, we need to see exactly what kind of issues you are facing currently in the communication, what kind of issues you are facing with the current culture we need to see, and then we can integrate with the performance management system effectively. Thank you, Doctor. And if, uh, if you allow me, I know we have exceeded the time limit, but can we take one or two questions? I'm good. Yes, I can take. All right, thank you very much. There's another one from uh, uh, Shailesh. The question is, does the process of conducting business impact assessment differ based on the size of the organization? Exactly. I think it is a good question. Uh, let me go back to business impact assessment. Yeah. In the business impact assessment, suppose if you have a 250 products are there and all the products in the current scenario or the short term plan, it may not be required in the uh, current scenario. Say in the current COVID scenario, if you take, uh, probably all the products may not be sold, like if the masks and um, PPE equipments are going in a fast moving items, whereas a, uh, you know, uh, some of those um, uh, hospitality things like a uh, restaurant business and restaurant related things, it is not going there. So when you are prioritizing so many, uh, if you have a multiple product lines, multiple products are there in your thing, you need to identify which product will move faster with the low effort and it yields higher profits. So you need to, uh, prioritize those things in the business impact assessment. So definitely the business impact assessment affects the products, uh, number of products, number of employees, 
number of locations, number of business units definitely will impact that. So I can say, I can simply say that if I can show you this uh, one slide here, you can see that it depends on number of business units, locations, department, team size, and the product lines also. It is number of product lines also, it impacts that. All right, thank you very much. Um, and uh, there's another question, if possible, can you at later stage, doctor, also present a case study on using the BAM scorecard? I mean, there's a, there's a demand coming in already now. Yeah, I think definitely uh, this is an example, but I can take a case study as an, this example I can do, but uh, I need to take permission from the organization without uh, giving the information much in details about the organization. I can uh, show you how to implement balance scorecards right from uh, developing objectives till sustainment. I can give a complete end-to-end -end case study. I can definitely do that. All right. There's a, there's a supplementary from Guntoku. How, how your consultancy support the implementing of the balance scorecard and model and business continuously plan in, organ in organizations in the context of, uh, in the context of uh, COVID-19? Very good. Uh, this is a good question. Actually, uh, the organizations now, especially when they have a cost cutting measures and uh, when they have a lot of uh, uh, cost reduction measures, they need not rely on continuously on an external consultant. But in this process, you might have seen that I have heavily uh, emphasized on networks. So once you establish the network, you need to have a um, um, consulting um, uh, consultancy requirement for establishing a network, planning and implementation. Once it is implemented, I think uh, your networks will take lead and they will go for the sustainment. But at least it depends on the organization size. You need to have these stages. Uh, let me go back to the first slide. Uh, at least in the planning stage and at least the implementation stage and review stage, at least one review cycle, you need to involve a consultancy and to establish your networks, to establish your operational uh, uh, network operations, performance review and all, you need to establish and then refinement and continuous improvements and all will take uh, forward. So yes, and the consultants, when it comes to the business impact assessment, as I mentioned to you, uh, you know, business impact assessment consultant will bring all these parties together and uh, he can facilitate in, uh, in the process, whether it is a business recovery, whether it is a business continuity or business impact assessment consultant will do your work. And it depends, again, you need to identify which standard you want to take it, whether do you want to conduct as per NFPA 1600 or whether it is a NFPA 22313 or ISO 22313 or whether you want to conduct with the, 22317, you need to decide that. The consultant will help you in uh, uh, meeting all the requirements, compliance requirements of these standards. Yeah, consultants will play, uh, uh, play a key role in uh, mainly for the planning, implementation and review stages and refinement and continuous improvements. I think your networks will take lead at a later stage. Well, that really brings us towards the end of the webinar. I really want to thank you, Dr. Amakula, for, for your time, especially on behalf of uh, GPMA, the Global Performance Management Academy, that you've taken the time to appear on this platform, on our, our virtual platform, to deliver this live webinar, which indeed turned out to be quite an interactive based on the number of questions people have been asking. In fact, we've been receiving a lot of requests for you to deliver another webinar on the topic of strategic risk management. So I hope we will be able to remain engaged and uh, we are already inviting you to deliver another webinar uh, subject to your availability and time as per your convenience in coming weeks. Uh, so once again, sure. thank you very much. Any quick concluding remarks that you would like to give before we dismiss out? Yeah, I, um, uh, I think it is a very uh, interactive and good session. It is and definitely uh, as per the request, we can conduct additional webinars. We can see what is the schedule's availability and we can uh, do that. Yes, if anybody needs any guidance in performance management system or a safety uh, systems or a excellence like a PDCS cycles and other things, if you need any kind of a support or anything, definitely they can come through you or they can write to me and we can definitely, we can support them. And uh, thank you very much for your time. And once again, uh, thank you very much for organizing this uh, webinar and for the participants. Also, thank you very much. Uh, good, good day, good, good evening or good night to 
yeah. all the partners. Thank you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you indeed. And thank you for being an early bird. I know it's quite early at your end and I really appreciate your time and support once again. And thank you all of those who attended this webinar. A number of you have been asking about the recorded version. So please stay tuned. You will be notified. We are in the process of launching our new website. So all of this will be informed. We got your email addresses. So you'll get an access to all the recorded versions of the webinars that we are doing. So please stay tuned. Uh, again, really want to thank you on behalf of GPMA, the Global Performance Management Academy. We are actually a hub of a repository of uh, performance management uh, and strategic planning. So you will be uh, given access to all these recorded webinars, as I mentioned, so please stay tuned. And with that note, I would like to end and conclude. So you all have a good day, good afternoon, good evening wherever you have dialed in from. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. I'm going to end this. You all will be automatically.